Oh, okay, Mark, you're kind of talking about looking at the bigger picture. Well, hey there. Welcome back. I see systems in everything. If you've listened to previous podcasts or read books or articles or just are familiar with me, you know that I've said that a few times, and it's something that I discovered about myself a while back. In fact, it was a, one of two things I discovered about myself, and it became very meaningful and very powerful. If you understand that 2 plus 2 equals 4, well, then now you know a fact that you can recite. But if you understand addition, then you can add any two numbers together. If you understand math, or at least basic math, addition, subtraction, division, multiplication, well, there's a lot you can do. And you can look at numbers, and you can look at the results of numbers, and you can even work backwards. If you learn that if you show up for your job on time and do your job, you get paid, well, then you have a job. But if you learn what your job is about and what the other people do, now you have more options and you can get a promotion. If you learn what the business is about, then you can do more. If you learn what the industry is about, then you understand how this particular business is positioned in the industry. If you're single and you find some people attractive enough to approach and get to know, well, you want to repeat that. If you find out what makes them happy, then increasing their happiness will increase your happiness. That's even better. If you figure out the kind of people you're attracted to, it opens up your world to where you should look. If you understand why you're attracted to certain people, not only do you understand them, but yourself. That can even be applied to the job we just talked about. If you understand why you work at a job, that opens up the world to other jobs you can work at. It opens up the world past the genre and the sector that you work in. So now you're saying, oh, okay, Mark, you're kind of talking about looking at the bigger picture. No, I'm talking about the system in place, sort of the gears. I'm talking about if you were to take a clock and open up the back of it and you see the gears and you, and you say, oh, okay, this drives this, this drives this, this is there for a reason. Most people have a casual awareness of systems. Most people know that there's probably a system in place in some cases, but a lot of people aren't even aware of systems that they're a part of, that they're being driven by, that they're at an advantage or a disadvantage because of. Wow, I dangled my participle right at you, I'm sorry. Becoming aware of a system can be one of the most powerful, empowering things that you can do. Whether the system is looking at a literal computer program and seeing why something keeps failing, because it's a feature and not a bug and it was designed to do that. Or why a business is stuck in a mode that it can't break out of. Or why a certain relationship fails over and over again. Or why someone's attracted to the same kind of person over and over again, which is toxic. But there's also a really big problem with that. And it's a problem that I experience. Because I look at everything as a system. And I don't consciously do that. It just, I just see it. It's like having the third eye and the third eye sees systems. And let me just say that if you've been immersed in finance all of your life, when someone starts talking about their business, all you start to hear is where they're spending their money and how they're not spending it correctly and so forth. If you're someone who's worked in theater for a long time, every time you go to see a play, you're not just seeing what's on stage, you're seeing what's behind the scenes. You're literally seeing props and how they've been placed. You actually hear things going on behind the scenes that most people don't. You understand why something was just reused or why the lighting is a certain way. So the obvious problem with those things, you would say, is, well, Mark, then you don't really enjoy that. Then you can't go to a play and enjoy it because all you're doing is thinking about the behind the scenes. You can't have a conversation about business because all you're doing is thinking about the financing and you're not really listening to their passions. Fortunately, though, it's not a replacement. It's an additional layer. It's something you have to manage. In the same way that trained psychologists 
try not to go home and diagnose their spouse. It's something you just have to turn on and off if you can. But there's an additional problem that I've encountered personally that I want to share. It relates to something that I always called back burner thinking, something at the back of my head, that I would take a thought and I would place it in the back of my head and then I could feel that it was still working. And I will tell you a long time ago when I would work on things like a role playing game and so forth, I would just say I would get a thought and my brain would be fizzing because it was almost the physical sensation of the back of your head fizzing. And I know that sounds crazy, but I knew that I had a thought that I that was a thought, a concept, a problem that I, that I was excited to deal with. But it wasn't a I'm going to stop everything and stare off into space and think about it. It was a put it in the back of my head and I'll continue working on it while I'm doing everything else. And I didn't think much of that. Like all the concepts that I've ever encountered, I didn't think much of that. But now I know that that's actually referred to in psychology as incubation or incubation thinking. And you're probably going to see a podcast on that. But what I'm referring to today is how I normally process systems. If I decide I want to look at something for the system, then I look directly at it actively to figure out the system. But there's a lot of the processing of systems for me, which is done in incubation thinking, which is that I'll encounter some things and then all of a sudden I will just go, oh my God, there's a system in place and it does this. The problem occurs when it's human systems because systems aren't just math and business and so forth. As you can imagine, there's a tremendous amount of social systems in place, hierarchies, interpersonal relationship systems. I mean, that's what the status game series of books are about. Just getting things done and how goals and, and motivations and things happen is what you know, Alchemy for Life is all about. All of those systems being in place, a huge framework and interconnected web work of things. And as you can imagine, not all systems are good. Systems are in place sometimes because naturally that's how things work. That's what physics and chemistry and optics, those are all how things work objectively. Humans are also complex, but in a lot of cases they are complicated. Part of this complication comes from the fact that they are immersed in systems and they generate systems. If I say the word bureaucracy, or I say the word politics, I'm doubting that that generates any positive feelings for you. Regardless of what you do for a living and regardless of what your politics are, hearing those words makes you feel daunted. It makes you feel like there's a thing that is overly complicated, probably doesn't work to your benefit. It's a lot of hoops to jump through. It's a lot of moving pieces. It's just a, a, it's just a thing that's there. It's just a massive layer that's there. Is there a system that you've become aware of? Is there a system that you're aware of that you try to explain to other people, but they're just not seeing it? Is there a system in your life that you know is there, but you simply can't figure it out and you think if you could just figure this thing out, it would make all the difference in the world to you? Did the instance of you learning a system change your life or make it go in a different direction? In other words, because you learned a system, it allowed you to make a turn in your life or because you became aware of a system, you decided to leave it? If you have answers to these questions and want to share them, I would love to hear them. And I'm sure other people would too. So feel free. Living life every day, late at night, not okay. All I want and I pray, all I need are some better days. Do you have a story to share or a question? If your idea makes it to a podcast, you will receive a shout out as well as a token of my appreciation. Late at night, not okay. All I want and I pray. All I need are some better days.